Hi, this is Kyle Smith with Haggerty. Today we're going to be repairing the cold start issue on my 1965 Corvair Corsa. So I picked this car up a couple months ago and it was always hard starting, especially on cold starts or cold mornings. And I began to think that there might be something wrong with the choke or at least something off with the carburetors. So I dug into it and I was checking my factory service manual and how the carbs should be set up. And I noticed that this is the choke actuator plate right here. And you can see there's nothing connected to it and then also that this is where the um, rod coming up from the thermostat coil down on the cylinder head would come through. So there should be a rod threaded in here and there should be that same rod clipped into the top of the carburetor here. So we're missing at least that piece. I could also tell that the thermostat coil, this should have a good bit of spring to it. And this one seems to be a little tired. So we're gonna go ahead and replace that and go ahead and locate one of these rods. I'm going to hop in, start the engine, and show you what it's like without the choke as it tries to start and run. So we don't need any specialty tools for this job, so I'm just collecting a handful of hand tools that we're going to be using. Mainly just a standard socket set. We're going to be removing the lower tins on the engine. I believe that's a half inch bolt. We'll see when we get to it. We'll also need a, a breaker bar most likely to get a couple stubborn bolts out. The car is 50 years old. We had to soak a few things with penetrating oil prior to starting this one. And then the last but not least, we will need a small chisel and a hammer to remove a twist rivet that's holding those thermostat coils in. So our first step is removing this lower shroud here. Um, functions a little bit as a heater box. It pulls the hot air in for the cabin. So as we remove this one off, it's just six bolts. Looks like they are size three eighths. I'll just have to pull all these off. There's a bolt here, it's slotted, and then up here on the top, and that one's slotted as well, so I can tip this down a little bit, stick my arm in here, and disconnect that thermostat bellows. I'm gonna go ahead and grab a light so you guys can see a little bit better underneath here and make sure that we're working on the right stuff. So now that we've got the pan off the engine, we've got a good light so you guys can take a look at it. You can see our exhaust here and then the cylinder head is just up above it and this will be our oil pan. Right here, I can, you can see it moving around just a little bit is the choke coil. So it's a bimetal coil, which we'll talk about here in a minute. Um, and that actuates the choke. It transfers its motion through a rod up through the cylinder head and moves the choke on the carburetor. This one, it looks like has lost its rivet. It looks like it broke off at some point in time. So it's really kind of running around loose in here. It's not doing its job properly. We're gonna go ahead and replace it since we're here rather than just repair this one, um, just because it's cheap insurance to make sure that it will work properly in the future. So what I'm doing here is I am disconnecting the rod that actually transfers up through the cylinder head. If I can get this rod out, it's going to allow me to kind of replace everything without having to remove the exhaust, which I don't really want to do right now. We'll see if I might be able to leverage it apart though. There it went. So we'll pivot that rod out and see if it's even in usable shape. I bet somebody might have boogered with this as well. So this is the rod that actually transfers through. It hooks into the bimetal coil down here on the cylinder head and then transfers this in, should thread into the rod that attaches to the carburetor. But it looks like on this one, someone has boogered it up pretty bad. It looks like they broke the rod off in there and then had tried to cut a slot in there to get the rod out. Definitely didn't work, definitely not usable. Fortunately, we ordered one. I've got one sitting on the bench. We can go ahead and replace this. So our next step, we're gonna go ahead and actually get this coil out of here. And we should be able to pry it, hopefully right through here. There it is. There, we've got it. It's a little greasy, a little dirty. It's worth it to go ahead and replace these. These are cheap parts to know that it's gonna work every time and be consistent between both cylinder heads is gonna be worth the few dollars. So now that we've got it off the car and onto the workbench, we can take a look at what parts were missing and how the parts that we pulled off actually work. So one of the main pieces of the choke is this bimetal coil. 
and you can see it here on this side and what it is it's a strap of metal with a different metal or a dissimilar metal coating one side of it so as this heats up what's happening is those metals expand at different rates and it will slowly expand and remove the choke from the car Personally, I like this better than a fully manual choke simply because you know it's going to come off at the right appropriate time and then it's also going to start. You just have to give it one pump of the gas, sets the choke, turn the key, and your car will start. So on this car, the twist rivet that holds that bimetal coil in place was actually broken off. On a normal setup or if you're just repairing this in a standard car, you're actually going to need to take a small chisel, twist that off counterclockwise, and it will slowly work its way out. You can pull it out with a set of vice grips. Uh, this one, I'm going to be drilling it out and putting in an oversized rivet just to make sure that it holds and will stay in for the future. Uh, this is pretty normal. The Corvair vendors make oversized twist rivets. It's gonna be nice, easy process for us. So with this one, since we are drilling into aluminum, it's broken off pretty well flush. I'm just using a nice little center punch to mark where I want the drill to actually start. That way I can make sure it doesn't wander all over the place or uh, end up completely drilling out the wrong spot since I do want it to fit correctly. Perfect. So with this one, since I was drilling out an existing rivet, I could kind of feel where the drill bit started to give a little bit more in terms of how much pressure I had to apply. And I knew at that point that the old rivet was gone. Normally if I was doing this, what I would do is I would take the rivet, I would lay it against the drill bit and I would mark either with a dark marker on the drill bit, depending on the type of drill bit you have, uh, mark it with some type of permanent marker or a piece of tape usually works very well. And it will allow you to drill in to exactly the point that you need when the tape touches your project, that will tell you to stop. Um, with this one, got a good feel for it. I'm not too worried about it. There's plenty of metal on this side of the head, so I don't have to worry too much about going in too far. Um, so this ought to be perfect for us. So now we're going to take our new bimetal coil that we're going to be installing and we got to wedge that back into place. This is kind of a fun game. It looks like it's just a wee bit larger than the original. So now we're going to go ahead and install our new rod that will pass through the cylinder head and up to the carburetor. So this has the threaded end on it for that secondary rod as well. So I'll just kind of sight line, hopefully catch the hole here on the first try and got it. So what I'm doing here is I am connecting the end of this rod through the actual bimetal part of this. So it will have that movement to it. It's a little bit of a catching it without removing this exhaust. It looks like. Might have just got it. There it is. There we got it. All the way through. So now that we've got the rod hooked up going through the cylinder head, what I'm going to do is tighten this bolt down here that will hold it in place while I put the twist rivet in just to make sure everything stays nice and square. Let's get a punch. So what I'm doing here is to hold that twist rivet in place as I punch it in. I'm going to use this punch and I put just a dab of grease here on the tip of it to hold the rivet in place um, while I maneuver it so that I don't run the risk of hammering my hand um, or pinching anything in the wrong spot. So now we've got our twist rivet installed. So that is gonna hold that bimetal coil in place. We can go ahead and remove the bolt we had in place to hold that there. And it should all hold nice and tight as I pull this out. So we're back to reassembly. What I'm gonna do is put this shroud back in place, reconnect our thermostat, which controls these doors here, and then get everything tightened up and we'll be looking at the engine compartment, finishing that setup. So now we've got all of these tightened down. We're gonna go ahead and move to the top side, actually get everything set up and adjusted. 
So I'm going to go ahead and pop the air cleaner off, stuff a rag down the throats of the carburetors just to make sure that nothing falls in, and make sure we can get the choke adjusted properly. So one of the pieces that was completely missing from the car when I picked it up in Texas was this little rod. And what this does, this attaches to the threaded end coming up from that bimetal coil and actually connects to the carburetor with this end. So we just have to thread this on and then I'll show you how to adjust it as we're threading that in. So we're going to go in pretty far with this one because what we're looking for, and I'll peel back a little bit on this one, you can see this choke plate needs to come all the way closed. So that is all the way closed for our choke plate, restricting the maximum amount of air. And we will want this to just barely fall into the hole on this adjuster. So we'll spin it in, a few more turns kind of checking along the way. Getting close. There we go. So right on it, falls right in. We'll make sure that that has a little bit of tension on it. And we can see our choke plate's still holding closed. You can see how it wants to spring to return. And with the engine being cold, that's perfect. So we've got the passenger side all completed. We're gonna go ahead and do the driver's side as well. It's a mirror image of exactly the same thing. So we'll pull everything out, put it back together. As we're putting the final touches back on, we'll show you how to adjust it and we'll show you a cold start as well. So just tighten up the last couple threads on this side as we get this into adjustment and we're close, but not quite there yet. There it is right there, slides in nice and easy. Good alignment, you can see our choke plate is completely closed. But what would happen if you parked the engine, it would be wide open and with no restriction coming from the choke. And then as it cooled off, you can see it would slowly start to close that choke plate, but it won't close all the way. And the reason is because there's a fast idle cam here in between the primary and the secondary carbs on this engine that prevents it from closing all the way because the accelerator has not been pressed. So to set these, similar to a lot of cars of this era, you'll give the accelerator just one good press all the way down, and you'll see that it sets the choke to the appropriate level. This is similar to a lot of cars of the era. Many of the 60s Chevrolets are going to be similar. A lot of Rochester carburetors are set up the same way. Um, so it's nice and easy. It's why you'll hear a lot of people get into cars at car shows. They'll give the pedal one good womp and then start it right away. So we'll go ahead and slip our air cleaners back on and get you a start so we can show you how these function like it's supposed to. Thank you for watching. Hope you found this video informative. If you like what you saw, please subscribe. If you'd like a detailed list of the parts used in this episode, please look in the description below.